Hello and welcome again to another edition of Let's Talk Ed with Professor Chris. Today we're talking skills, trades, really what I think of is something else that you could do, get off and start your own little business if you want to. All right. My special guest today, on my left, Gene, and on my right, Hamid, experts in skills and trade. So we're gonna get right started. If you haven't subscribed, please, please, please do subscribe, all right? And we'll get right to it. Welcome, welcome, Gene. Welcome, Hamid. How you all doing? Great. Thank doing you for great? having us. Yeah, no, this well. is great. I'm, I'm very happy to have you all here. So to get started, I'm gonna go, uh, Gene. This is a trick question, okay. but also a very easy one, okay? That I always ask my guests. Looking back, did you see yourself being where you are right now? Did you go to school for what you're doing right now? I did not. I actually went to school and majored in English. I wanted to be a journalist, and I was actually a writer for a large portion of my career. And um, I just decided that I really wanted to give back to my community, so I decided to become a teacher. And I taught English for a little while, and then I just realized that students need so much more than what we can offer inside of the eight hours of the school day. Um, that encouraged me to kind of pursue college access coordinating, and then led me to career coaching, which kind of led me to youth apprenticeship. So, yeah, it's been a different type of journey. Great. Not so a straight one. We'll get into details more as to what your area is. Hamid, same question. I would say no. Okay. Um, By the way, I haven't had anyone that yeah. said yes, yes yeah, on I, this topic. I, when so. I think about it as yeah. being an instructor now, yeah. no, I never was in school thinking of being an instructor. Now, being in the trades, yes. I mean, I've done that since I've been out of high school, so I do. I would have probably seen myself in the trades, but mm -hmm. instructor, no, I was, no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's great. So this is where I look at the camera once again to say, this is not new. As you're going to college, you're thinking about what you need to do. It's okay to get started. You're gonna figure it out. Our dreams might change, our visions might change, but we're still gonna be on track. All right, so Jean, tell us about your program. So I am the Youth Apprenticeship Coordinator with Wake Tech. Um, we are offering the opportunity for students to start working inside of their career pathway while they are in high school. And we also give them the opportunity to continue their instruction, their classroom portion of their learning at Wake Tech. So it's a really great program because it allows us to expose students to pathways sooner, which allows them to finish quicker. And we also do that free of charge. All right. So I'm gonna get a little bit, what I usually, when I'm doing this here, I say I played a the devil's advocate, mm -hmm. but since I don't like the devil, I'm gonna play the <laughs> angel's advocate. Okay. But we'll get into that. Hamid, I mean, tell us a little bit about your area. Uh, well, I'm an instructor in the building trades. Um, yeah, I'm an instructor in the building trades. I, I've, I guess, uh, before that, I've done service work. I've done worked under contractors. So, construction and maintenance. That's that's just pretty much my background. And yeah, okay. So what are some of the specific skills? So I'm trying to figure out what the difference is based on what Hamid said mm -hmm. and what you said, apprenticeship. How do those two align? Or where does a student start? Would you say they start with the trades or do they start with apprenticeship? So I think that is, first let me say completely up to the student. I think each student is different with what they're looking for, their overall outcomes in the end. And I think that's where you are able to separate which pathway they take. So if you have a student that just wants a certification, they just want to be able to come to college and work in their particular industry while they are also gaining that educational experience at the same time, um, I think that apprenticeship is definitely a great avenue for them. If you have a student who is not quite ready to take on a full-time job yet, 
maybe they are just really wanting to zero in on the educational side of it and get that part first, then I think they should take a different pathway that doesn't look like apprenticeship. Okay. Yeah. So when I hear what you just said, it sounds to me more like your target audience is high school. Is that Yes, yeah, so correct? that is right. that is certainly one of our target audiences. We are opening it up. We've actually just started opening our apprenticeship opportunities up to high school students this year. Um, primarily, we have targeted those who have um, gone to high school and maybe they are in a career pathway and they're looking to change now. They want to change directions. They want to learn a new skill. They want to make a little bit more money. Um, those are the ones who we are seeing express interest in our apprenticeship pathways. But it is now open to high school students because we do know that students should have options as they are graduating. It's not all about a four year university. So, you know, we want to be sure that they know all of the options that are available. So you just say money and you also said it's not all about a four year university, which is where my angel advocate is going to kick in very soon. But Hamid, let's very quickly. So. From what she said, apprenticeship trades, what are some of the trades specifics that you all? I like what she just said. I, I would agree with it. Um, my, for just the trades, I would say that you would actually, I would suggest to students, any student, to take up a trade. Okay. Whether you're going to go four year or you're going to just get an associate's degree, take a trade first. No matter if you want to be a business, um, if you want to get a degree in business, engineering, any other field that you can go in there's a trade that can relate to that in some form or fashion. Also, we've seen the markets, the, the, the actual job industry change, right? I mean, there's a lot of people who've lost jobs. When you talk to trades uh, persons, they may have lost a job, but they didn't lose income most time. They can figure out how to feed themselves. So that's my, my, my kind of take on it would be suggested to all students. Okay, good. So, Jean, for the, when you say apprenticeship programs, for example, we're talking about carpentry, electrical, plumbing, right? Are those some of the programs? Yes. Okay. So those are currently some of our programs. We are always working to expand the pathway opportunities that are available for our students. So we have expanded out into EMT. Um, and we are currently pursuing other non-trades pathways such as pharmacy tech. Okay. Uh, so we are, we're always looking for apprenticeable employment opportunities. Good, good. And then uh, Hamid, your trades, are they also the same kind of the like carpentry? Yeah, we're okay. built, yeah, we're the building trades. So I'm not against any trades. Sure, I think sure. all skilled trades right. make sense. I just am right. familiar with okay. building trades. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So again, you know, I want students to understand that when we're talking about apprenticeship, we're talking about trades, there's a lot of them, right? Yes. Plumbing, electrical, you know, so, okay. How are you convincing your high school students to go into apprenticeship? So my biggest sale for students um, is the opportunity to gain work experience inside of a career pathway while you are still learning about it. Just as a college graduate myself, even though I aspired to be a journalist, I did not work for a newspaper while I was in school. I did not gain that real world work experience that I think sets you apart once you graduate. And so what we offer inside of that trades field is the opportunity for students who are interested in the pathway to work as they are completing classroom instruction. So if you're in automotive and you're learning how to change oil inside of the class, when you go to work that day, you're changing the oil of a car. So it makes it meaningful and it also sets them apart so that when they are applying for jobs, they are first choice because they have that experience. Could I, could I piggyback on that? I, actually, I was gonna say you said something about Everything you want to do starts with trades. So I was gonna go there, but yeah, please pick so it back on it that. Yeah. So what I was thinking when with the apprenticeship program, it makes sense if you're someone who knows you want to be in the trade that you are going into. It makes sense to go through an apprenticeship program because now you're gonna receive 
not only the education, but you're going to be paid. You're not, you're not coming out of pocket. When you're going to school, you're possibly coming out of pocket. And now you have to decide, is this what you truly want to do? So if you're trying to decide what I want to do, go to school possibly okay. for the trade. Right. If you know that, hey, I want to be an electrician, I want to be a plumber, I want to be a carpenter, then go into the field as an apprentice and gain the experience, gain the money at the same time. And then kind of piggybacking off of what we said earlier about the four-year college, if, you're in, if you get a trade first, then go to a four-year college, you possibly can eliminate a lot of your debt because you could work and go to school at the same time and possibly pay out of pocket instead of taking on financial aid. So that's my thought in that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to be very honest. <clears throat> right now in our four-year programs, honestly, after doing four-year programs, and I, everyone that has been watching my show know that that's kind of what I've been Lately, though, as I talk to different entrepreneurship or small business owners, I always say, you know what? I don't have a skill. And that's plain and simple. I don't have a trade. Like right now, with what I'm doing, if I do decide, you know what? Okay, I did do bridge design a long time ago before coming to academia. I want to branch on my own, which, by the way, I've tried. It is not easy because it's not an individual scale where I could go out on my own. What do you all think is a hesitation for students, right? And again, granted, there are students that come into my program that are struggling with the math or some of the heavy sciences, and I would say, have you thought about apprenticeship? You know, have you thought about trades? And there's always that hesitation, like, no, I want to go to a four-year school. So what is a selling point I usually don't like to say selling point because this is almost like a gift, uh, but how are you all addressing that issue with students to say, you know what, apprenticeship is not really that bad? Yeah. So, all trades for that matter, yeah. I think it's a very costly question mark. Sure. Um, when you are not really certain what you want to do and you branch out into a four-year university, there's a potential for you to accumulate a large amount of loan debt um, while you're figuring it out. Um, I think a lot of students or a lot of parents are, are rightfully so asking students very young, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the career options that they have been exposed to are what they generally right. move forward with and select. Um, and for a long time, four-year university has been the way, it's been like the gatekeeper of success. You go to college, you get that four-year degree, and then your opportunities are unlimited. However, we're now living in a time <laughs> where the trades are in very high demand. And if you take a moment to just explore some of these pathways, you might see that it's actually something that you're good at and that you like. It's not going to cost you a lot of money to pursue this pathway. And your return on investment is going to be so great. Immediately after you graduate, probably with what we're seeing with our students are all usually hired within the first semester of the program. So you have a job, you know, you're making a great salary. And once you graduate, you're making an even better salary. So for our students, I think I always try to center it back at, you know, what do you want? What are you looking for? And how much of a risk are you willing to take in order to receive this life that you that you want? And apprenticeship is a guaranteed job. Right. I mean, what type of students are you seeing coming into trades? Are these students that say, I'm going to go to college to go to, into trades, or are those the ones that, for example, I would say, you know what, the four-year is not what you need to do, go and look into trades. What, what are you seeing? So I've yeah. seen students to the point that have just graduated high school. Okay. I see students who are, may have been in their field of what they do for 10, 15 years, oh, and wow. now it's like, uh, they're like, I want something new. This isn't for me. I've had people who said sitting behind a desk wasn't for them and now they want something new. And then I've just had some people who, even veterans, who are, are just done with the service and now they're like, hey, I did this in, in the service. I want to uh, go forward with more. So I'm like, cool. You see, it's, no, it's hard to say a specific, there's no specific because 
if you go into the trades, the trades are diverse. So that's a beauty of the trades. You, you, you see everybody. There's no only this person does this or that. There, you see everybody. So that's one of the, beauty, the beauties of the trades. Yes. So Hamid just raised a good point because when I went into civil engineering, I'd always wanted to do bridges. I had no idea that after getting my degree in bridge design, that I wasn't going to be on the field actually designing. And I've shared this story many, many times, and I'll share it again. When I was actually in the industry, we had to go talk to some of my middle school students about what we do and just to kind of encourage them, motivate them as part of a kind of a community thing that we do for the company. And I was telling them about all oh, this bridge. This was back in Florida. And I said, oh, you know, we're, uh, one of the bridges that I'm working on right now is the highway you know, across their school. And this innocent student out of nowhere said, do you know my dad? And I'm like, does, he, does the dad work at a company that I'm working? I don't know if you all kind of get where this is going, mm -hmm. but I'm like, what's his name? You know, it's like, so I said, okay, does he work? Do you know which company he works for? He's like, no, no, no. He is building the bridge right by our school. And then it clicked. When I went back to the office, I had to tell everybody in the office that we don't build bridges. We don't even construct bridges. We design bridges. But again, when I was, excuse me, <clears throat> into the bridge, I thought I was going to be putting on my hard hat out in the field, you know, pulling rebars, you know, and all that. But that is not the case. So I had to always kind of tell the students, I said, same thing. If you're thinking about mechanical engineering, you're actually not going to be in the plant. You know, we take field trips to the plants. And actually, some of my students are like, oh, this is cool. I would like to. I'm like, well, with your four-year degree, you aren't going to be on the line like this to do. So that's a very, very good point. Good. What is the misconception, I'm going to start with you, Jean, that you think people have about apprenticeship? Well, I think a lot of parents that I interact with and even students have the misconception that it is a very dirty, gritty type of get into that, right. pathway. And, you know, depending on which pathway you choose, that might be the case. But there are pathway options available to students that don't require those that specific setting. So I think that's one of the misconceptions that we faced as, you know, just trying to get the word out about our pathways. And then I think a lot of it is also questions about the longevity of a career. You know, people associate apprenticeships with being a short term experience. And it is a short term experience as far as you working on the job and you gaining the education, but what you take with you, which in the end for us is a journey worker certification, can last a lifetime. So it's not, it's not a short-term experience. It's, it's very much an investment. What do you think some of the misconceptions people have about trades? You can be honest. I'm trying to think. I guess you would say maybe, maybe a big misconception of the building trades that maybe that only certain people can do it. I mean, okay. everybody, I'm talking from tall, short, big, small, skinny, female, male, everybody can do the trades. I mean, if you're somebody who likes puzzles, who likes to solve problems, it is perfect for you. If you can think, if you're just somebody who has that, I think outside the box, it is perfect for you. If you're somebody who doesn't think outside the box and you work straight with what's given to you and this is what is perfect for you. So it's like, I would say the building trades is perfect for everybody. The, the misconception would be that it's not for everybody okay. when it really is, right. if that makes sense. That makes great sense. And I, and I know you're trying to be really nice, but I'll give you one of the misconceptions <laughs> and it will get a little dirty here. One is the pay. And I think students are surprised to find out how much people in trades and apprenticeship can make. We'll, we'll get a little more in detail on that. When I was growing up, and now I'm actually, you know, I think one of the conversations I've been having with uh, Hamid for a long time is 
trying to get into some technical programs to kind of see how, you know, I can implement that outside the U.S., you know, for because there's that need. But when I was growing up, and I think it's the same here, we tend to think that people who go into trade are not smart enough. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest misconceptions. Yes. Yet those who think they are smart enough, like you said, cannot handle trades. Mm -hmm. So I think that is something I actually want to look in here to clarify <laughs> to say trades or apprenticeship are not as easy as you think. Yes, it's a pathway for those who, you know, we say, okay, the calculus, the sciences, this is a way for you, but it's still not an easy way. So I kind of want to clear that uh, misconception. Let's talk money, since I know that's a big thing. That's important. Yes. Okay. <laughs> who wants to start? Uh -huh. yeah. with, with, so you want, you want to speak on what type of money is in It's in trades. Trade. I get my trades, and uh, I open my own little plumbing. Uh, well, yes. If you, I mean, when you're talking about being a business owner, profits are unlimited, right? If you're talking about entry level to most building trades, you're probably somewhere between fifteen and twenty dollars an hour entry level. No way. Yeah, for most most trades, and look at it this way right now: there's a, de a high demand for tradespersons. Right. There's a high uh, amount of tradespersons who are retiring. All right, so you, we now need to replace those those persons who are just doing the work. It's companies that, I mean, I speak to companies often and they are like, yes, we'll come speak with your students. Right. We need people. They'll tell the students, hey, just send me your resume. I, I know you're in school right now. Send me your resume and we'll see if we can work around your schedule. Yeah. These companies need bodies. They need people and they need willing people. That's what the real thing is. You, they don't just need somebody who's like, I just want the money. Right. Then you have to be willing to make the money, but learn your skill. And so the money is there. <laughs> Jim? I agree 100%. And I also like to tell the story that the per first person that I ever met that owned the beach house worked as a welder. Um, it is an amazing opportunity for you to make a lot of money. With apprenticeships, we register all of our employers with a competitive wage scale. So from the moment they register with us, we know what they are planning to pay students. And through the apprenticeship program, students are given raises at certain increments based on their training. So once they are in the program and doing well, moving, maneuvering through it, they receive a raise every year. And we know how much they are going to be making at the end as their journey workers rate. So all of that is determined for them prior to or as the, the employer is being registered with us. So as students are enrolling, we can tell them exactly what they can expect to get paid while working with a specific employer. And it's, like you said, very competitive salaries yeah. because the demand is super high. You mentioned welding. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, so I just give you all my little background on how I don't go on the field, except we have to go do inspections. Mm -hmm. And welding was one of those things that I, I, w I had. The guys who do the welding on our bridges were getting paid anywhere from $45 to $60 an hour. Mm -hmm. And it really made me think. I'm like, <laughs> this trade. <laughs> how about I do, I learned how to weld as a side gig. Yes. So again, I understand where this is coming from, honestly. And Hamid, you touch on this here. I think even with a four-year program, there should be a requirement. Maybe the people will say I'm pushing this too much. But honestly, I think just because I have seen four-year students graduate with what it is that they want to major in, and more so in my field is the engineering, civil, electrical, and I've had students say, you know what, I, this is not really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be more hands-on. Right. So in my mind, if maybe there was some skill or trade part of the curriculum to say you know you're required to do this whether you use it or not mm -hmm. i know students are going to hate me for saying this here because they're looking at oh boy we already have 60 <laughs> credits we got to do now you got to mm -hmm. add a trade skill but i think that is and by the way germany is very very heavy on trades so that's where we mm -hmm. talk a little bit of politics because they pay more for the trade skills that they pay for the four-year engineering, right? Or yeah. the four-year school. So 
So that's uh, that's good. Again, you know, for all my four years students thinking Professor Chris is here, you know, he's let us down. No, I'm just trying to provide option and more practical, relevant options, uh, you know, for you all. So again, I'm very happy that we kind of debunk the myth of, oh, you're not smart enough going to apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. All right, so one area that I want to discuss is the different the diversity, right? Mm -hmm. In apprenticeship, are we going to see more women? Are we going to see more men? You right now would probably see more men still. Uh, we are definitely targeting our approach, working with local business owners who are women who own businesses inside of the trades, and then also different community organizations, just to make women aware of the opportunity. Because just as Hamid said, we know that you can do it if you want to do it. It's no one is counted out. So we are definitely going to make an effort to do a lot more marketing and a lot more um, programming that is tailored specifically to women in diverse populations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, would, I would think that it definitely needs to be marketed to women more. Um, just the, the natural nature of detail orientation, the, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, I've had females in my class uh, that I've instructed, and a lot of times they'll take initiative. Right. They'll be almost like the group leader. Right. They'll, they have something about them where once they understand it, yeah. now they're pushing it to everybody around them. Right. And so I, I think, I mean, look, I'm not saying don't market it to sure. men as well, but I really think the way I got into the trades was from my mother. So that's why I'm like, I know this firsthand. I mean, you should have told me that before oh, we started, so I can yeah, have I, you I, tell I, us a little I'm bit about sorry. that, well, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah, that she, I mean, she pushed that's me great, into the trades. Yeah. That's what she wanted to do, and she's seen, hey, after graduating high school, right. complete something yeah. every time. So that's how I went trade school, then college for associate's degree, because right. it was steps. You're 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 receiving something as soon as you complete it, instead of sometimes that wait until four years just mm -hmm. to receive that paper you had so much happen in your life in that four years that could easily tell you, you know, I got to leave or, hey, I need to jump into another path. And now you're extending your years in school more than you need to. So, but yeah, women should definitely be, I mean, I've, I see a lot of these organizations like the women in skilled trades and all are popping up more, which is great. But I think we just need more. Sure. We just need more. This has been good. I think you all kind of touch on uh, almost all the questions I have on trades and apprenticeship. If not, then I know one, the difference between the two. Again, I know it paid, but definitely the option, you know, for, you know, I'll be honest. I know, again, I'm going to get a lot of comments about, you know, this interview here, which is great. Uh, but again, the four year road is not for everyone, right? I think, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, one of the areas that I also like very, very well is the flexibility. I mean, with the scale, with this trade, you know, I could go, go get a loan and open my own shop shop somewhere. I cannot open up a bridge uh, company. That's, that's the fact, right? So, I mean, I'm being very honest with that. So very quickly before we close, uh, JM, by the way, I, I need people to understand that this is the, we've met, but we've not really met. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this has been great. So what are your closing? Anything you want to say about apprenticeship that, you know, to kind of close this up? Yeah. I would like to encourage people to job shadow. Um, if you have any interest at all in the trades or even any career pathway outside of what you're currently doing, take an inside look at it. Go to the company, take a walkthrough, take a tour, Business owners are amazing because they are so willing to open their doors to you and show you what they do. So that would be my advice. Anybody that's interested, just, you know, obviously I'm available to showcase what we have. And, you know, but even outside of companies that we partner with, I'm more than happy to work with anybody to expose them to the trades. So, yeah, I mean, and so. What what you said about you're not trying to, you, you know, people are going to comment about the four year college. So I would say four year college may not be for everyone, but college is. So that's something what my brother, I didn't understand it. I mean, I remember in middle school, I was trying to go to a vocational high school and I was like, oh, I'm going to be a barber. Cool. But 
I was like, that'll stop me from having to go to college. My brother was like, college is for everybody. And I didn't understand what he was saying. But then when I came across an associate's program in the building trades, I'm like, oh, college is for everyone. I see what you're saying now. So you don't have to necessarily get a four year degree. You don't have to get an associate's degree. You can still go to a college and get cert certificates. You can go. There's so much. There's continuing education, even if you're in the field. So you have multiple paths. But I also would say, hey, don't turn down these apprenticeships. The apprenticeships make sense. If you can get paid to learn something and then you're able to take that and then provide for your family and teach your family something. And now you create something for your generations behind you. It's worth it. That would be my go for it. Well, there you have it. Apprenticeship trades. Again, don't crucify me. I'm just the messenger here, but you got a lot out of this here, okay? Personally, like I said, today, if I want to start a business, there is no better way if I'd had a skill, all right? So don't miss out on that opportunity. Uh, you know, research, research. We're talking about different trades, you know, carpentry, electrical. There's so many different, different trades uh, you could do. You all think about entrepreneurship, always how do, can I start my own business? This is one way to actually do that. And again, for all my four-year transfer students, not saying anything bad, just providing more options. Thanks again for joining us here this, this morning. If you haven't subscribed, please, please, please do so. We'll get more people on here. And by the way, if you have any questions for either JM, Gene, or Hamid, just put it right in there and then we'll get his messages uh, to them. Thank JM. Thanks, Amir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This is great. great. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.